That is the appropriate reaction to... Huh? It's just Hayate, come on. I was gonna say that's the most appropriate reaction to learning that Salim is pride. Absolute shock. No matter where you are, I will be watching you from the shadows. Yeah. It's Salim. <laughs> Checking in on you, he's everywhere. Hello there, madam. This is your neighborhood florist. What are you talking about, Colonel? Uh, sorry. I kind of got drunk and somehow bought a car full of flowers. <laughs> yeah, he's got to get rid of them somewhere. Is this a date? Did something happen? No, sir. It's nothing. Yeah, you got to figure out what pride is first. Everything's fine. And sorry don't you have some kind of code down, for this? But I don't even own a flower vase. Thanks for thinking of me, though. I feel like that was code. Something's wrong. It's amazing how uncanny his timing is. <laughs> yeah, he knows something. Why won't she accept my flowers? <laughs> And who am I going to give them to now? I mean, Roy knows like 8 million girls, so I feel like he'll figure something out. There are all those girls at the bar. Oh, he could give it to, uh, Hughes' daughter. That'd be nice. That'd be sweet. All squads are to contact us here immediately if you spot Scar. Yes, sir! We've got orders to keep the two of you company. Yeah, yeah. Try and keep up. they're Kimberly's men? No doubt about it. Episode 38, Conflict at Best School. Nice. There was someone right over there! There was? He went this way! Wait for us! What the? Alchemy? Nice. They turned down this hall. Damn it, they're trying to lose us. Very astute observation <laughs> by that random guard. It's gonna take weeks to search every one of these buildings. It would make things a hell of a lot easier if Scar and that girl just came to us. <laughs> there they are. She did come to us. <laughs> what in the world are you doing here, Alphonse? May, I didn't think we'd ever find you. <gasps> you came this whole way just so you could find me? Yeah, I really needed to he see did. you. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot she has a crush on him now. My sweet Alphonse. <laughs> I need you to tell me all you can about Alkahestry. Can you go with me for hundreds of miles? Oh, right, Winnie. Wait, why is she in there? Bumping my head. Excuse me! Who is this woman, Al? Huh? <laughs> How could you do this to me? Have I not enough no, you, Al? No, it's not like that. She's just a friend. You don't need to explain anything. Wait, why am I explaining this? Yeah, like exactly. I'm on her or something? Yeah. What's going on here? The Elric brothers are here! Huh? And who are you? Don't act like you don't know me. How could you have forgotten Yoki, the great proprietor of Usewell? Rather easily. Are you sure we've actually met? Oh, how cruel! And after you destroyed my life. Huh? Here we go. Finally, some backstory on Yoki. I brought prosperity to the town as both governor and foreman of the coal mine. The people loved me, for I was more devoted to their happiness than anything. Yeah, this guy looks real happy. Happiness for everyone. We were cursed by the arrival of the greatest criminal of all time, the state <laughs> alchemist, okay. Edward Elric. Ed flaunting his wealth. Little did I know, it was an ingenious deception. Oh, it was alchemy? Wasn't that the original purpose of alchemy? To turn things into gold? So he helped the workers? Was this part of his job or just something he did for fun? Even worse, I was banished by the ungrateful townspeople! <laughs> the military even <laughs> fell for their wretched lies. I set out to renew my life in every trade imaginable. But I failed at each one. I then tried to invest my savings. <laughs> That's my kind of investing. Left with no other options. I called upon a wealthy family to request a chance. This story is great. It's 100% accurate, everything he's saying. <laughs> what just happened? Looks like Yoki's blasting off again. None of it would have happened 
and he ended up in his fall, which is where we first saw him. Nothing would stop me from taking my revenge upon the ones who had done this to me. Yeah, good luck with that. And it will be a vengeance far worse than death. It's Highly not unlikely. Right. I'll never let a thieving hussy like you take it from me! Did just call me a hussy? I already told you, she's just a childhood friend. You should think I'm about still something explaining. else, like Alka history. You better listen to me, damn it! <laughs> yeah, I'm sad. Life is yeah. hard. Trust me. I know just how you feel. Are you patronizing me? Don't forget, Major. I know Scar is our main objective. You'll be the first to know if we locate him. Yeah, he knows. Like I said in the last episode, one of the most fascinating things about this whole arc, or like these few episodes, is that there are moments of great action, like Armstrong killing Raven, but most of the battling is like this weird and intense psychological battle where they all know where the other people are relative to them and what their what their goals are. You have all these actors here in this town right now with different objectives, and they all know each other's objectives, so it's super weird, but it's great. It's a lot of fun to watch. I think they're all operating under the feeling that they will have the ability to beat their enemy when it comes time, and not all them can be right you must be scar we'll need you to come with us mr kimberly is waiting for you i'm impressed with your tracking skills but do you honestly think that the two of you are going to be enough to take me against my will i feel like scar we'll would just see, go anyway but we do have a slight advantage i don't know if i'd call that an advantage this reminds me of teenage mutant ninja turtles it's Bebop and Rocksteady. Full metal Yoki. The most important character. And Zam Zampano and Gerso. I've learned a lot since we met. Like what it takes to create a Philosopher's Stone. I know there's something wrong with this country. And there's something rotten with its alchemy. We've decided to look into the possibilities of Shingi's alka history, and we figured that she could help. You're on the right path. This book is a collection of his research and theories, but they'll be impossible to translate without the assistance of Scar. What do we need him for? You gotta put your differences aside. <gasps> what do you think that was? That's the building Scar was in. You think it's the military? Look, all of you just need to stay put and hide out in here. Al and I will find out what's going on. So Scar's here. Right, that's a big deal for Winry, but I feel like she already sort of made her choice. It definitely doesn't mean she has to like him or forgive him, but I feel like she turned a corner in that episode. In the Let It All Out episode. About Dr. Marco, I sort of like how it's come full circle in a way where, like, he initially trusted Ed to find the truth for himself, the truth within the truth, and Ed did exactly that. And that was a lot of trust that Marco put in him, and now here they are more on the same page. Like, it worked out, which is nice. It could have gone wrong, but Dr. Marco's insights were correct. His intuition was right about Ed. He's fast for his size. Oh my god, it's awful. You see, we know you've got to touch us to use your alchemy, so we'll just keep a nice, comfortable distance while we attack you. Thank you for telling me your plan. <laughs> the sound, too. It's awful. I guess we got here just in the nick of time, huh? You did. Uh, didn't they just run off somewhere? His voice. Brother, I think these are Kimberly's goons. His voice? That's what alarms you about this rhinoceros and this frog thing? Their voice? Where did their shirts go? I guess they ripped off. Thank God their pants stayed on. <laughs> you just sit tight while we take care of Star. Ah! Talking monsters! What there you go. That's appropriate. We're all on the same side! I've never teamed up with any freaky looking monsters! Help us! They're pretending to be our friends so they can eat us! This dude's just dead. Look at him. He's bleeding. <laughs> I don't know why that bothers me so much. <laughs> Damn, look at that just fist fighting this giant frog this thing. Is even faster than Scar. That's good to know. Please stop. Damn, that's combat is insane. It's so light, it's incredible, amazing. Oh right, his new auto mail. Let's see how fast you move covered in my spec. Your special power is These so villains, awesome. man, they're too much. <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable. And you must be the enemy if I don't know you. I bet you can't even prove to me that you're on our side. Fine, I'll transform back to prove it to you. You just got played, dude. Thanks for the opportunity, sucker! Zompano! <laughs> it's kind of stupid to drop your defense during combat. 
Damn it, let me go! All right, big guy. Why don't you take a little nap? Did he just snap his neck, solid snake style? He's a heedless fool to charge me without thinking. You offer your arm to me, no fool. then I'll take it. I hate to tell you, but my arm isn't steel anymore. <laughs> Make this difficult. He's doing his ground thing. I never realized that before. The frog them. said it, or the rhino said it. Wow, it's amazing that Winry actually gave him pause like that. It's so funny how much Scar has changed in my own mind. I have totally forgotten in some ways that he was a villain in the beginning. I think there have been at least two really important things for Scar in terms of my perception of him. One of them is the flashback, obviously, right? Like understanding the source of his pain. The other key thing was after the first encounter with Winry, the fact that he was clearly torn up about that. You know, you want to believe that people have the chance for redemption. You want to believe that people can reflect on their mistakes and become better and become more than better, they can become heroic or become useful or make an attempt to atone for their sins, even if they can't undo the past. And so I got to keep track of where Ed and Al is relative to me, because for me, Scar is, I mean, he doesn't feel like a villain to me anymore, if I'm being honest, but I can still understand where Ed, Al, and Winry are in that regard. That's close enough. You brought her here, Major? Uh, what are these creatures? You got lucky. You didn't have to hear the noise that this thing makes. I regret having to treat one of my own people so harshly, but I can't just let you walk away. Not after what you've done. Your own people, huh? We've got it from here. Uh, uh, Winry! Stop, Winry! Stay back! Let me go. It's all right. It couldn't be any less all right! Miss, you need to stay back. Just let me... I feel like Winry's gonna help him. understand. You have to let me talk to him. I need to, Ed. <laughs> nice. I'm glad he didn't fight that. Why did you kill my mother and father? Oof. There's nothing I can say that won't sound like an excuse. And nothing can change the fact that I am responsible for their deaths. What happened? What just happened, yeah. That's where Major Miles was. So I'm going to take a wild guess here and say that that wasn't Scar escaping, that that was them coming to some kind of arrangement or agreement and figuring out a plan to help them. I would have loved to see a longer conversation between him and Winry, but I feel like as far as answers go to Winry's question, that wasn't a bad one because at least he accepted responsibility. And he's not making excuses. And there's really nothing that he could say that would make anything better, right? Like even if he broke down in tears and apologized, it wouldn't really make much difference. It's also really big for Winry because they're about to straight up execute Scar and she could have just let that happen, right? But she stepped in trying to get a better understanding. You know, her mind's working. Like I said, I think the episode where she first met Scar was a tragic day for her, but I think it was a turning point in some ways of her starting to come to terms with it. Though it'll be really interesting to see how their dynamic continues to play out. This isn't good. Looks like we've gone over the 24 hour time frame. And you know our ice cream. Oh, yeah, she's gonna close Patience them in. And compassion aren't really her strong suits. <laughs> we did the best we could. We didn't know we'd have to grope our way around back in the dark. Maybe if these guys hadn't made us douse the lights so their monster wouldn't see us, we'd have made it. They probably saved you. <sighs> Welcome back, sir. I thought you were ordered to seal up this hole after 24 hours. Uh, yes, sir. But as you can see, it hasn't been 24 hours yet. Is this clock broken? Oh. <laughs> it's a nice Got watch, it. isn't it? General Armstrong gave it to me whenever you guys left. Wow, some compassion. See, I knew she was good. She's got that Armstrong DNA. She can't help herself. Did you find the advance party? There are only Look two at the softness. Survivors. May I ask what you're doing? I'm looking at the mountains. Looking for Drachman spies. I like the winters up here. Oh. Everything's black and white. I appreciate the pure simplicity of it. That's not true, sir. Hmm. You can see blue if you look up. There's nothing that's entirely black and white. And thanks for showing your soldiers smile? a little mercy. It means a lot, sir. That's nice. But I don't know what you're talking about. That is the most compassion you're ever going to get out of Briggs. It appears we have guests. More reinforcements from 
the upper ranking military. Central Command has a few questions that they would very much like to have answered. Like where is Raven? Spoiler alert, he's in concrete. <laughs> they got something planned. Damn it! What's going on? No, 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 it's a ploy. Metal. It's a ploy. You bastard! This is all your fault, Kimley! You were supposed to be watching Winry! <laughs> Mr. Kimley, look up there on the roof! This is a lot of trust they're placing in Scar with Winry's life. No! I knew. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. That was one of the weirdest episodes in recent memory, but also really, really good. Like, there was just so many different parts of it. There was the whole Loki flashback, which was sort of bizarre. I don't know if we necessarily needed it, but the style was interesting. Maybe they just felt bad leaving him out of the show. Because he was sort of introduced with no backstory in the beginning. Then you also had Teenage Mutant Ninja Chimeras with that horrible noise that is going to haunt me for the rest of my life. And a great battle of wits between Ed and Scar. But I think most interesting for me is the Winry-Scar dynamic, even though it was really short. I have a feeling we're going to get a little more about that. When they unveil whatever plot this is they have to elude Kimberly. we'll probably see how that went down. I mean, it's not like they're going to be friends probably, but you can just feel the character growth for both of the characters. This is one of the things I love most about Winry and why I like her as a character so much. She's always someone who will rise to the challenge, right? Like, she'll rise to the occasion and she's always trying to become better. Like she really puts herself out there in so many ways. She's gotta be grief stricken and she's gotta be incredibly furious. And she's in this war zone surrounded by military officials and Ed and all these people facing Scar. And then instead of cower in fear of all things, she decides to go have a conversation with the guy. You know, it's insane, but it's really cool too. Like she's just living her life. You know, she's trying to become better. And I like that Scar actually took responsibility for it. There are a lot of ways it could have gone. Like he could have ignored her. He could have become enraged or he could have said something snide in a very gruff way. He was basically like, yeah, yeah, I'm terrible. Which I think is probably the right thing to say. And it shows that he's thinking about it, or he has thought about it. And so we have this challenge of like, now that we're all together, how do we elude Kimberly and how do we get out of here? So it'll be really cool to see how things play out. But that's the end of episode 38. I'll see you guys very soon for episode 39.